Hello and welcome to the Move Your Business Forward podcast. These talks are hosted by Rob Boll, founder of Evoke Management and CEO of International Leaders UK. We'll be talking with experts from both these companies about issues that affect SME companies today. Today I'm joined with one of my Evoke team members, Stephen Reid. So Stephen Reid is a part-time director at Evoke and he spent Um, just over 30 years working in the SME company space. He's worked globally, so UK, US, Middle East. He's uh, worked in multiple sectors, manufacturing, professional services, and uh, just has a breadth of knowledge around um, SME companies and what goes on. Um, Stephen, today, what I was keen to talk about was, with all your experience, the five top tips you would have or the five areas you would encourage any business owner or entrepreneur to think about for helping to move their business forward. Um, so those, that's what I was keen to talk about. Is that okay, Stephen? Absolutely fine, yeah. Um, five. I, I suppose the top one is people. Um, every, everything, uh, goes without saying, revolves around people. Apart from wanting to build up good relationships with your people and get the best out of your people, um, SMEs, we often fall into a trap as well of keeping people uh, in positions where either we don't recognize their their talent and grow them, or alternatively, we work around them because actually they're not really performing as well as perhaps we want them to, and we don't know how to develop them, them. or they're just not cut out for it. And then we do workarounds. Um, and often when you start looking at things like cost cutting, um, you look at your people first. Um, and it's a kind of, a, what am I saying here? Our, 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 our people make us successful or not. If, we, if our people on, on, on average are, are better than the norm, then we have a successful company. If they're not, then we don't have a successful company. It's really almost as simple as that. Um, and uh, what t- typically happens is you get people in, a, in an SME that are willing to, to, to go the extra mile. They'll take things on of their own um, uh, initiative. They're the people you tend to follow. Sometimes they're, they're really good. Sometimes it takes things off course, but they're the kind of people you tend to, 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 to support. Um, the quality ones who don't make so much noise, a lot of those have got all sorts of talent that we don't necessarily get out of them. And, and working with them to develop that talent, I think is something that most leaders could, could do with learning more about. It's actually listening to them, it's, it's teasing information out of them, it's getting their thoughts on things, because some of them will not be the, the kind of the, the, the ones that put themselves out there, but, you, but they, they, they have a, a great deal of ability, a lot of these people, and, 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 and nurturing that is really important. Equally, some of the, the ones who are more, who will put themselves out, aren't necessarily the people you always want to rely on. You know, you tend to get sort of sidetracked there and then you look at actually what they're doing and maybe that's not what you want. So I think the issue with people here is is spending more time getting to know your people, actually listening more to the people. Uh, it's, it's looking at where their skill sets are, what more they can do to contribute, where the people are that you're doing your workarounds because you've got accustomed to the fact they're not quite doing it the way you 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 you. you that's good for the business um so there's so that's the big bit for me is about is 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 actually nurturing talent uh keeping talent um motivating and and giving them maybe even skin in the game and so forth but there's lots and lots of ways well thanks Stephen. that's great it reminds me as you were saying that yeah with people it's just good leadership right if you can Mm. lead your people to be the best versions of themselves then you're going to have a better, more successful company if you've got that attitude towards your people. As long as they're the, the right people, the right people that you can you can get behind you and the business vision and what the plan is, then yeah, it's encouraging them to be better, the best they can be and giving them an environment to succeed. So they're no, all very valid and there's, there's a huge amount there. I mean, anyone you know, not doing any of those things or, or thinking actually I'm doing a lot of those things, but there's a couple of extra things. I think it's well worth thinking, what is the people strategy? And as a leader, am I doing all the things I should be? Am I making enough time 
for my people just to get to know them better and find out what their qualities are, their strengths, where they want to be in the business, all those things. I think super important. So thanks yeah. for that, Stephen. Num number two, what would you say? Margin, I think. Margin. Um, um, I mean, there, there are so many aspects, as everybody knows, about running a business, but the focus on margin, so many businesses are preoccupied with turnover. Um, they've got to get X, X amount of sales. And, and, and particularly when times get tough, you'll hear business owners say, uh, well, we just took that because, you know, we couldn't afford not to take it. It's, it's, it's a myth. I mean, you, you, obviously, you need to cover your overhead, but essentially, um, if you keep your, if you protect your margins, um, then you build resilience into the business. So many people do not do that. They chase turnover without looking at the margins uh, to service the business they get. They need to increase their overhead, whether that's people or or, or, or the support things that go into into the business. But if it's not delivering the margin, all it's doing is kind of eating up your cash. So I think that the, the real focus on understanding uh, your margin uh, and and what protects your margin is is the the most fundamental part of running a business. Um, uh, alongside that, I mean, it's it's a, it's another point, but you know, good business owners manage their cash and they manage their margin. They they kind of go hand in hand. Um, and they're the real fundamentals that pretty well every business owner understands in terms of at least the, the theory of it. But the odd thing is um, uh, when people get under pressure, how quickly they forget their focus should be on their margin. And what if you're, if you're telling someone how to do that, you know, someone that's going, yeah, we look at turnover, I look at cash. What, what, how do you determine or how do you give them advice on what they should be looking at in the margin? How do they get to a point that they've got a, either a dashboard or they've got a number they're looking at? How do you get them well, to get on top of that? Well, if you're going to set a budget out at the beginning of the year and you know, I mean, it, it, companies do things different ways. They do top up, down budgets, bottom up budgets, the, the sort of blended one between the two and so forth. But they know what the margins they've got to achieve for their business. To achieve that business, you've got to that that feeds back into how you price the, the the work you're going for, either whether you're selling products or you're selling professional services and so forth. You know what you're you're what you what you're having to charge to achieve the margin you want. Now, if you have a situation, for instance, in professional services business, where the market is is really tight and the pressure is on margins, and you cut your selling price then you have to cut your cloth accordingly. What do you have to do then to manage your resource to make sure that you do not burn the same amount of money as you would if you were getting your full price? How do you actually protect that, 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 that basically that margin? Um, so I think there are, there are key things in there that uh, having a simple dashboard, if you like, uh, is, is, a, is a way of doing it. But what you should be doing is managing your resource against your jobs. If you're having a situation where you've got a, you've got a, um, uh, you're, you're having to sell products more cheaply, then you have to look at your supply chain, you have to look at your uh, your payment terms, you have to look at all the other things that will actually potentially improve any any discounted price you've given. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that makes sense, makes sense. So third, a third thing on your list, is that cash? You mentioned cash and margin is cash number three? Well, cash is really important, yeah. Um, uh, and, and again, it's surprising how many people kind of um, understand the importance of cash, but don't manage it very well. Um, that's particularly true when business is growing quickly and the pressures on cash are enormous. Um, and uh, people tend to look at their, their, their P&L account. Of course, not everything is on the P&L account. An awful lot of things, you know, will, will be additional to that, but they'll have a pull on cash. Um, uh, the issue about cash collections, we know in, a, in, a, in, in time, tight markets, people will hang on to, or clients will, or customers will hang on to their money as long as they can. You know, so how do you manage that? What terms do you set up front? How, how uh, diligent are you when you take contracts on about payment terms? Um, are all of the people that, that work for you in your organizations talking to your clients or customers? 
do they concede on payment terms, which puts a drain on your cash too easily? How 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 rigid or not rigid? How uh, robust is your cash collection system? How robust are your contracts that you have? How 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 uh, far forward are you projecting your cash burn? Are you allowing for you have little things? You know, you may have a, a, a big invoice going out, uh, but on a long payment term. But you you have to pay VAT potentially before you get the invoice paid. So that dictates your t uh, timing of the invoices. So there's lots of little things that all have an impact on you actually preserving your cash. So first is knowing where it's going to go. And second is making sure that you're collecting it and you're, you're, take, you, you're using every tool in the box to make sure you're not, you're, 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 you're not losing sight of it. An interesting what you're saying about the contracts and just, I guess, the commercialness of, of payment terms. I think a lot of companies miss a trick there or don't yeah. or almost afraid to ask to be paid up paid, you know, maybe a portion up front or in advance. Yeah. Um, and if someone really questions that, you kind of got to immediately think, well, actually, that's a bit of a red flag there. Are they ever going to pay? Or is yeah. the battle? So what would be your thoughts there? What would be your tips to kind of improving the chance of getting paid on time and how to approach those conversations? I think you just. I think, I think you've got to be. You've, you've got to be straight up front, and you've got to. And, and you, you've got to do what you say. As soon as you allow people to not pay, and you still supply them, they 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 will take advantage. I mean, every, it, it's, it's human nature. You give somebody a you know a, a, an inch, and they will take a mile. I mean, that's that's what happens. If you if you say, you know, the moment you do not pay your bill, we do not supply. Or we stop work or whatever and you and you do it you don't have to do it um what should we say you, you you can do it diplomatically but you have to make sure that people understand that 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 you have a business to run as well yep. and so it's if you handle it entirely professionally um then 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 and you're robust about it then i think that that, that, that works yeah they understood that sounds good 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 point um we're up on to uh number four and five comes uh, key, key relationships i think um mm. it is it is um you know cust customers or clients are our lifeblood i think making sure that um you touch base often um is really important i think it's it's there's a there's a tendency i think with quite a lot of of, of people that you get you get good customers and um, and you get into a routine with them, and there's a tendency, perhaps, um, you know, subconsciously to almost take them for granted, mm. and all the effort you put in at the beginning kind of uh, slightly dilutes over over time, and it becomes routine. Uh, it shouldn't, uh, because a they're the easiest place to place to pick up more business because you know them. Uh, but secondly, you leave yourself vulnerable to competitors coming in because somebody comes in and maybe that your client's position has changed a little. Maybe you're not up to date with what's happened. Maybe there are certain changes of personnel. Um, the the po politics of the company have changed. Unless you're on top of that and you know it and you're working with these people all the time and, and reinforcing how valuable they are to you. If you get into the trap where you open the door to somebody else, if those people are good enough, they will take your business away from you. So I think working on those key relationships is critical um, and making sure that you know what's happening in their, their companies, that you don't go to them just because you have a new product or service to sell. You go to them to find out what's happening at their end. You listen to them. You understand the dynamics in their company. You make sure that you're picking up things that could actually help you to develop new services and products because you're listening attentively to your clients. So I think it's really, really important. I think with the key relationships and maintaining them, I think people struggle with what's the purpose because I think we, we naturally warm to, to people that we get on with anyway. But you're right, just kind of have the conversation and having a, a loose agenda at your end can actually help your business massively by just getting some better understanding of issues in your client's business or even a supplier's business. Yeah. What with um, a range of, I, I'm getting the impression at the moment, and it is partly, I think, coming out of the pandemic period, it's partly because it's at the moment it's approaching summer holidays. But what would you, how would you encourage someone to just get into the rhythm and the routine of having these conversations and 
how should they have them? In person, phone calls, Zoom, lunches, dinners, I, what, what do you reckon? I, I, I don't think there's any substitute for face-to-face. -face. Mm. Um, I think we're all Zoomed out. I think mm. we all know how to do Zoom, but it's, it's, Zoom is not really very spontaneous. Well, we're talking on Zoom now, but if we were talking face-to-face -face, um, uh, over a cup of coffee or a, or, or a sandwich or something like that, it, it, probably have a different conversation. I think that um, um, I think face to face is important. I don't think lunches and uh, it depends on circumstances. I mean, lunch has got unfashionable, they're a bit more fashionable again now. I think people are actually recognizing that it's worth spending time. And when you do things like lunches, you get to talk about things that not just about business, uh, which is quite nice. So you get to know people. Um, so I think I think building relationships, not necessarily friendships, but relationships, so you understand the dynamics of their business and the pressures they they, they face. I think that's important because then you can then you can make sure you're supporting them. Yeah. Um, so just I, and 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 frequently, even if it's just a touch base, even if it's just pick up the phone and say, you know, everything okay. Doesn't doesn't have to be long meetings. It, it, yeah. But you know. No, that makes sense. I, I think also, I. Um... I found in my my business journey, you know, you 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 kind of start thinking this costs money. Yeah, if you're potentially taking people out for drinks or for lunch, but the return you get on that, you know, can be can be astronomical if you think about it. Yeah. And it's just making sure you're you're using that time wisely, and and yeah, you never know what comes yeah. of that. I think people really appreciate that personal touch and and showing that you've got an interest in them, and you're not just trying to sell something to them. You're just keen to build the relationship and yeah, position it that way. Um, yeah. Is that going to be a a big difference if if, if any and if another supplier comes up or or another another opportunity? I think you you've got that more solid relationship because you've worked at it and you you deserve to to win that that future business. I'd say. So um, number number five, I think we're on now. Fifth, fifth, probably so. probably an actionable plan or plans. Um, uh, if so many people do business plans and strategic plans and all sorts of wonderful plans most of them are aspirations or works of fiction uh, very very few are actionable um, perhaps it's a, that's a bit of a sweeping generalization but it's a bit like writing yourself a list um, if you have clear clear targets of things you want to achieve and you can start ticking them off uh, and you may not tick them off in terms of completion but you're ticking them off in terms of progress against them. That's important. Um, if those plans are too aspirational um, and you don't know how you're going to achieve them, then it's point is writing them. Yep. And, you know, you can say, well, I'm going to increase my turnover by a third next year. How? Um, you can say, I'm going to introduce a new system. Have you got the resource to, to, to do it? Have you got mm -hmm. the money to do it? Um, how is it going to happen? Um, so I, I think that the plans have to be realistic, that you have to have clear strategic goals for your business. You have to know how you're going to achieve those goals. You, you have to make sure you've got the resource and the cash to be able to achieve those goals. Um, and, and you've got to make sure you've got the, the buy-in and the ownership of the people that are going to deliver them for you. Um, if you if you haven't and all you're doing is writing a wish list, then then it's about it's as worthless as the paper you're writing on, uh, figuratively speaking. I know we don't, we don't write much now, but I think that 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 for that that really is it. And and again, I, I keep looking at business plans uh, and shaking my head because you say this is great. You know, I'm in in five years time we're going to be four times the size we are now. Okay, that's great aspiration, but there's no plan that sits behind it. Mm. Um, and so I think that, you know, this business, this, this word actionable is really important. Yeah, I, I, I fully agree on the actionable plan. I always like the um, description or definition of the strategic plan that I heard. Um, the strategic plan is just a series of, of smaller plans that you put together and all of those working together is the strategic plan. And something like that, you can break down make it actionable, make sure you've got the right people involved on board behind it, clear, clear accountability, 
and off you go. And I think not enough time is often put into that to have that actual plan. Things can be put on paper and sound amazing. And I think the beauty of anyone building their own business is you can do that. You can put your plans, your, your aspirations on a bit of paper. You can build whatever you want. But unless you start getting that into small bite-sized actionable plans for you and your team, it's never going to happen. And I think you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's an amazing way to get more value out of just spending that time creating those actionable plans. Um, so Stephen, we've covered people, margin, cash, key relationships and actionable plans. I think that's uh, important areas for any, any business owner, any person in a leadership position to have in mind um, for their business. Um, I think that's perfect. So thank you. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? No, I think anybody listening to the podcast will say, well, we know all those things anyway. And most yeah. of us do. The trouble is that we kind of know them in our heads. We don't, we don't really actually test whether we're doing them as, as, as well as we could. Yeah, I'd, so anyone listening to this, I'd advise, think about those five areas and just note something down you're going to do different or you're not doing right now against each one of those things. And I think you'll have a much more uh, productive next next month, next six weeks, six months, whatever it is. I think that's the key. Get this stuff that's in your head into action because it's easy. All this stuff is easy in your head, but until you actually start doing something about it, yeah. difficult. Well, Stephen, thank you. I've really enjoyed that. Thank you for spending the time on this. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll speak soon. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for listening. If you'd like more information about the topics discussed in this podcast, then you can find us on our website at moveyourbusinessforward.com.